Beautiful. I think we're going. Camera's over there. People are joining. Beautiful. We'll wait for a few more. We'll get stuck into it. G'day Steven, who else we got? Dale, Ronnie. Welcome guys, comment your thoughts as well. Um, and we'll get stuck into it. Appreciate all of you staying up and watching. Love this group. It's from Aaron Gox, yeah mate. It's hard not to love this group at the moment with the way that they're playing and the endeavor and obviously getting the results. We're all pretty happy, 4-0. We're outright top of the table now, and um, it's feeling good. It's feeling good as a Saner. It's good, good vibes at the moment. Good to go to the games and see performances like that. That really does um, lift the spirits of a weekend, especially a long weekend as well, so we can enjoy the replay uh, quite a bit. Zach Holmes, the Saints footy is back. 4-0, baby. That's from Josh. Darren says, hi, Jakey. Owens, rising star, surely. I'd be very shocked, mate, if he didn't get that. I mean, he was bloody bonkers tonight. He was everywhere. He's kicked his two or three, whatever it was. Um, and, yeah, it was just everywhere. Like, aerial contests were great, but his pressure was great. And he got the finished finish piece with a couple of goals as well. So he did everything right. And I think he got over 25 possessions as well. So I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get the rising star. Um, proud to be a Saner at the moment. That's from Rusty. Too many thoughts. Just pumped. That's from Kerry. Um, Tony says, well, the young quartet are amazing. Maybe number two isn't too far away. That is a big call, but I do agree. Ethan says, how good was that? Jakey. Tommy says, flag saints. And uh, Goxie says, these guys are taking the challenge and grabbing it. No, time, um, no Tim, no Max, no worries. That's spot on. Hey, Godfather, what a win. That's from Zach. Up the same is from Henry. And Lukey says, awesome game. Well worth the trip from Darwin. So good on you, mate. I actually met a few people today that were uh, like traveling fans from Perth, especially as well. They've got a big contingent in WA. So the um, Western Saners, I think, are a big, big supporter base um, over there. Uh, but from Dar Darwin as well, like that's a big trip. So good on you, Um and yeah, hopefully there was more Saners there as well. We got a decent crowd against Gold Coast, 22, not bad. Um, but it was quite loud in that third term when we got going and bloody hell that third term. That was pretty good, wasn't it, Jess? That was incredible. Yeah, like, got us out of our seats. We were, like, first term was a bit shaky, you know, to be honest. But when I looked at the scoreboard and I thought, oh, we've probably played as bad as we've played all year. They've played pretty clean and it was only two points the difference. So I was like... If we switch it on, we kind of said that. If we switch it on, we'll get the job done. And pretty much from the start of the second term to the final siren, we were all over them. Again, we made a team panic. Again, our run was too much. It was, yeah, we just overwhelmed them in every part of the game. And the scoreboard ticked over. I would have liked to put a bit more to the throat in that last quarter and really embarrass them. But 53 points or whatever it was in the end, you can't. You know, that's that's a great effort. Gold Coast just beat got you know, beat Geelong last week, the, the reigning premiers, and that's no easy task, regardless of whatever their form that you know, that they're in. And then um it was a worry, you know, that this is a game that we could drop. And a lot of Saners mentioned that to me pre game. They were very worried that these are the games where you play against a team you probably should beat, but they've got some talent, they've got a good midfield, got a good forward line, Ben King's a worry. Um we could drop this. But I was really confident that if we brought our best, that was going to be enough. And we brought our best for, you know, 90% of the game. And by far, that was very clinical. You know, the back half was excellent. Again, kept a team to eight, I think, eight or nine goals tonight. Our percentage is 160, so it's very healthy. We kicked the first time this year over, over 100. And that's three weeks in a row now where we've kicked over 15 goals, like 90 plus, 90 plus points in the last three weeks. So for a team coached by Ross Lyon, we're... Um, we're doing very nicely without any key forwards, kicking scores like that. And it helps when Jack Higgins is kicking five, Owens is bobbing up, Caminiti's bobbing up. Uh, we're just finding goals from everywhere. Brad Hill kicked a couple, Sinclair as well. 
we're just finding different avenues to goal every single week. And that makes it really hard to defend against when you don't know who's going to kick the goals. You know, do you focus on the smalls? Do you focus on Owens, who's such a unique build? You know, he's big, but he's so good at ground level. And his turn that set up, I can't remember who he set up, Filippo for a shot on goal where he got the ball on the wing and just turned his defender inside out with a bit of pace. Not many players his size can do that. So we've got a very unique player in Mitch Owens, and um, hopefully he gets the rising star on this week. Caminiti as well competed well, took some great marks, kicked his couple of goals. Not much more you can do. And here goes, just taking every chance that comes his way. And if he's getting three or four chances a game, he's usually he's kicking the three or four goals the last two weeks. Nine goals in two weeks for Jack Hig- um, Higgins after being down in the first couple of games. So great to see him bounce back. Jade Gresham as well, special mention, was huge. We've kind of talked about him on the pod. He's been a bit selfish, but tonight I thought he was very unselfish. It was his best game overall, I thought, in terms of ball use, in terms of setting up teammates. His pressure was great. Didn't make a mistake, I can't remember. So great, great um, game from Gresh. Stocker as well. Stocker, Wilkie, Dugues cleaned up in the back line. Didn't make a mistake. Anytime there was a spill in the back line, Sinks, Naz, Stocker, they were there, clean it up, give it to Wilkie, and we'd rebound instantly. And Mason Wood, like, so important that he could play this game after his shoulder injury uh, being tested during the week. Again, a great outlet. Didn't kick his goal, but was working his ass off with Ronnie Burns as well in tandem on that wing. So we outran them, we outgunned them, we outbodied them. Our midfield stood up big time. They didn't have Jared Witts. He was laid out, I believe. So that allowed Rowan Marshall to take a bit more control. But they still have good midfielders in Tuke Miller and Matt Rowell and Anderson. And again, Crouchy did the job. Filippo was in there a bit more, which was great to see. Get him experience in the gut. Sinks played through there. Hunter Clark played through there. Windy was good. Kicked a goal again, I think, um, in the game, early in the game. Everyone, again, played their role. I, I... I've probably missed a few. Even Cordy, you know, he's bobbed up, played most of the last quarter in the ruck. We subbed off um, Rowe, and obviously Bytel came on, and disappointingly he hurt his knee, it looked like, twisting his knee in a tackle. Um, so hopefully that's not too serious. Fingers crossed for Jack Bytel. But um, apart from that, it was, you know, it was a 10 out of 10 performance. 50-point win, kept him to a low score, kicked a big score. Everyone chipped in, and we're top of the ladder. So you really, like for me, it's very easy to review it was just a great performance and um, now we get to the next two to three weeks where it's a you know these are the tests everyone is now saying we haven't played anyone we just played you know a team that beat the reigning premier we've beaten the bulldogs who have won the last two weeks against richmond and brisbane touted as top four we've beaten frio in round one when they were touted as top eight and we've uh we've flogged essendon not flogged essendon but we beat essendon who are a team that's growing under a new coach, and then we've just beaten the Gold Coast, who are always dangerous with the amount of talent that they've got on the park. So to say who have they played is just ridiculous. When We've got the injuries that we've got, um, the setbacks that we've had. We've been underdogs in a lot of the games, and now people are just saying we haven't played anyone because we look like a threat. So Collingwood next, bring that on. Then you've got Carlton, then you've got Port. So this is the um, this is the big test. We have to come through this in the next three weeks with at least two wins in my eyes to be serious contenders. We take two wins out of the next three. That's incredible. If we win all three, that's ridiculous. If we lose all three, we're back in the pack and there will be more question marks put on us, you know, based on are we serious or was that just a good run? So the best part is I think our boys are going to be living up to this sort of high playing against Collingwood, big crowd, neutral location. They've come off a bad loss. They're going to want to rebound. But we look like the type of team that just doesn't give a shit what you do, you know, in terms of the opposition. Bring it on. We don't care what you're going to do, what you're going to throw at us, because we want to see if you can handle what heat we've got. And I love that. You know, it's good to focus on the opposition, respect how good they are, but we also then take away their strengths and then we throw a few punches going the other way. And they need to start, you know, they need to take those punches and, and get going. So, yeah, it's going to be a big three weeks. So I say bring it on. Hopefully we get some troops back. That's the key. Um, I don't know who might be back, but hopefully there's a few surprises and we can sneak a few big names back into the lineup. Um, Stocker and Cordy is solo. That's from Casey. We ran them into the ground. That's from Shane. Go through some more. 
Michael says, it's hard to single out anyone today, just too many stars, too many players playing their roles, doing what needs to be done. Stocker is massive. This is from Taylor. Such a good pickup. I tell you, Mitch Owens could go all Australian. That's a massive call, mate. In his second season, um, Mitch Owens all Australian. I don't know about that, but just keep doing what he's doing, and I'm going to be a very happy Sainer. Sam's asking, can we beat Collingwood? I think out of all teams in the comp, the, the certain style that we play is a style that I think could hurt Collingwood because it's very similar. We run in waves, we use the ball well, and we have a lot of different goal kickers. They don't have many gun talls. McStay's come in, but again, he's not that gun tall, the one vocal point that they bomb the ball to and he kicks 10 every week. It's not like that. They've got Majacek, they've got Elliott, they've got Dacos, they've got a lot of different players that kick goals. So they're like us. It's going to be unpredictable, but I think we're, we're in prime position to take on these sort of teams, you know. Free hit for me. 4-0, it's a free hit. Go out, show, just give it everything, see what happens. Test yourself against the best, because to me, they are one of the best teams in the comp, and see how we stack up. So can't wait for that opportunity next Sunday. And just briefly on that, for all Sainers that aren't going to Adelaide and they're in Victoria, um, within, you know, 40 to an hour of uh, the Bentley Social, we will be there Sunday from 3 p.m. 4.50 p.m. start game time. Uh, we've got an event on Facebook, so RSVP if you want to come along. I think it's discounted food and drinks, the game on projector screens, and it's all Saints, you know, attendance. It's going to be a massive atmosphere. I think already 100 have almost said they're RSVP'd, which is massive in two days of the event being up. So if you want to come along, RSVP soon, because it looks like we're going to sell that one out, and that place is going to be booked out next Sunday. So if you don't want to watch it at home on the couch, Bentley Social, check out the event on um, the Facebook page and RSVP. Um, Lewis said, I said last week Owens played his best game, just topped that again. Seems to get better and better with age. Our defense is so good, never worried. Our defense is so clean. Every team just gets stifled. You know, Ben King and Casbolt are threats. Lacocious kicked five last week on Geelong's defense. Hardly got a sniff tonight, any of those three. Any of those three. They didn't look likely to kick a bag, you know. They, they were in the game for a quarter and a half, and then after that, we stifled them. They didn't know how to kick goals anywhere else. And we just were on our merry way. It was great to watch. It was very relaxing. How are Hayes and DMAC? That's from Sam. We spoke to them pre-game in the victory room, uh, part of the social club, which was a great, so great for everyone for turning out and sharing their thoughts and giving some questions to the boys. But DMAC, I think it's still kind of TBC. On him, he'll go back to Sandy, he said. Jack Hayes reckons it's probably another five to six weeks and he'll hopefully be back. So second half of the year for Hayes, DMAC, still uh, to be confirmed. We'll go through a couple more before we wrap it up. Um, Heath says, Callum Wilkie, Mason Wood, and Jack Sinclair, all Australian at the moment. Look, you wouldn't be far off, mate. They all look very good. Um, James says, we are gut-running team. We can run all day. Yep, I mean, pretty much at the start of the third, I thought we're going to run away with this because we looked so much fitter than the Gold Coast. They were trailing, jogging. We were sprinting to every contest and spreading out of it very well. So, um, yeah, again, that fitness has come through. It's still only round four. We're going to do this for another 18 weeks, but... It's a start, and we're looking fitter than a lot of teams. Guy says, Lit is still on. Definitely calm down. Now, um, now saying that, let's beat the shit out of Collingwood. <laughs> yeah, let's just do that. No one's going to believe that we're a decent team until we beat a really, really good team. And we've beaten some decent teams on our run and flogged a couple of teams that could be dangerous on their day, but inconsistent most of the time. Collingwood's the one. You know, we want to beat Collingwood and... God, we want to beat Carlton. You know, Carlton fans are up and about. They're the only undefeated team left. Three wins and a draw. We want to we want to come out of this and still be number one. That's the goal. So we've done all we can do. We've beaten all the teams put in front of us. It's not our fault that some teams have been down on form, but you still got to play well to, to beat these teams because if you give them a sniff, you lose. And we've seen enough upsets in the competition that we know a lot of teams can just drop games they should win. And... So far, we've not come close to dropping a game. We should, um, we should win at the moment. So let's keep it going. Hopefully, Bytel's the only injury out of this, so we can hopefully have a good week on the track, eight-day break, uh, long weekend now, so we can relax and come back Sunday. 
take on the Pies. It's going to be a big, big crowd at Adelaide Oval for the Gather Round. Who would have thought the last game of Gather Round was going to be probably the match of the round in Collingwood versus St Kilda in our 150th anniversary uh, season? So I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up there, Sainers. Again, beautiful performance, well coached, well drilled after quarter time. Our biggest win of the year, I think, 53 points. Close or level with uh, the Doggies game. Not much more you can ask from that. The youngsters stood up again. The senior boys led from the front. And the back line was just exquisite. Just chef's kiss. It was beautiful. So I'll leave it there. Thank you again for watching this uh, video. If you've tuned in halfway through, it'll be on YouTube very shortly. You can watch it in full. The podcast on Monday at Saints TV Pod on Insta and YouTube as well. So subscribe to YouTube. Giving out prizes every week. So um, if you watch the channel and enjoy it, subscribe. And on Insta as well, at Saints TV Pod. Let's get to 19,000 this year. That'd be awesome. So plenty of content coming out during the week, saying as we'll dissect this game in full and um, give you all the content in the lead-up to the Collingwood game. So thanks again. Enjoy your Easter as well. Enjoy your long weekends. Have some fun with the family. Relax. Eat plenty of chocolate. And uh, I'll be back during the week for plenty of content. So take care, Sainers. And as always, we're 4-0. It's Saints footy. Go, you mighty Saints. See you guys.